All right, so this week's uh, seminar is going to be on capital budgeting. So capital budgeting projects. Capital budgeting is the process of evaluating and selecting long-term investments that are consistent with the firm's goal of maximizing owner wealth. A capital expenditure is an outlay of funds by the firm that is expected to produce benefits over a period of greater than one year. And an operating expenditure is an outlay of funds by the firm resulting in benefits received within one year. Um, your typical budgeting decisions, you're going to make a decision, do I want to uh, expand the plant? Um, do, am I a manufacturing company and I am... Um, Instead of buying a new plant, do I just want to ex expand the existing plant? That might be a decision we'd have to make. Um, equipment selection. Do I want to buy the new equipment? Um, or do I, or would I prefer to replace the equipment? If I'm getting, if I'm a manufacturer and I'm introducing a new product, I might have to buy uh, uh, new equipment. Um, so do I want to lease or do I want to buy? Would I want to buy real estate? That meaning, would I buy land? Uh, would it, or would I invest in a new building? Um, those are all really good capital budgeting decisions that would be made for many, many businesses, especially if I'm expanding my company. And then technology. We always are going to have to have technology updates. So project Proposals are made at all levels within a business organization and are reviewed by finance personnel. The review and analysis of the proposed project is usually done by financial managers who assess the merits of investment proposals. Companies usually base capital expenditure decisions on a dollar value. Upon approval, expenditures are made and projects are implemented. Large products, projects can occur in phases. I'm going to explain phases in a minute. After completion of the project, the results are monitored and actual costs and benefits are compared with those that were expected. Action may be required if actual outcomes differ from projected ones. So I work a lot of projects. I work for the United States Postal Service. I'm an accountant and I'm a project leader. Um, and I'm constant, we're constantly rolling out new projects. We hardly ever, ever do this all at one time, roll it out all at one time. We do it in phases. And there's many reasons to do it in phases. First of all, it's pretty expensive. But if you catch any issues or any glitches at the at the right, you know, if you if you contain it in smaller sections like phase one, phase two, and phase three, you catch a lot of glitches. So I do a lot of uh, applications, internet applications. So we never discontinue one project while in Implementing another project is kind of an overlap, and so when we talk about phases, um, sometimes it's way too expensive to do it all at once, or sometimes it just doesn't make sense to. Um, if we're trying to replace an automated project, um, or replace a manual project with the automated project, to stop doing the manual um, until we get everybody, because the post office is huge, everybody accustomed to the new. To the new pro to the new process. Hope that makes kind of sense for you. So there's several tools that we use to determine how to uh, select a a uh, project. Um, payback method is one of them. Your company may have a certain period of time. They might have a say, okay. If you're going to have a project, if the project if we get our initial um, investment back within three years or two two years or five years or whatever your company may say. Um, you know, then they feel that, okay, that's a worthwhile project. So the payback method is the amount of time required for a firm to recover its initial investment in a project. The payback period is the investment required divided by the annual net cash inflow. Okay, so here's an example. Payback period, um, the initial investment was 175000 and I'm getting 55000 back. So the payback period is going to take me less than four years to recoup my 175000 so according to the company's criteria, management would invest in the project because its payback period is less than five years. Here's another example. I have uh, two projects for Carter uh, Manufacturing. I have, uh, if you notice my um, little um, slide down here, I have Project A and Project B. The initial investment for the first project, Project A, is 26000 For Project B, is 27000 But now notice that 
the the cash inflows for year one, two, three, and four for Project A. It's a, it's a consistent um, amount across the years, sixty five hundred. But the operating cash inflows for Project B, um, they are they they do vary. My first year is twelve thousand. Second year is two thousand. Third year is three thousand. I have zero for four years because I recouped all my money in within year three. So the project that you would select if you had to pick between the two is you would pick project B because it is actually less than project A. I would get my money back. Um, so net present value is the difference between the present value of cash inflows and the present value of cash outflows. In PV, is used to analyze the profitability of a projected investment or project. Um, so the decision criteria is if MPV is greater than zero, then accept the project. If MPV is less than zero, reject the project. Pretty simple. So I know that many of you, um, I've talked to a few of you, and you struggle with Excel. So as managers, um, you will always be using um, Excel. Excel is just is just how you're gonna. If you're not if you're not comfortable using Excel, you need to get comfortable using it. Um, I don't know anybody, any manager of any in, in any field that would not be required to use Excel. So there's a lot of good tutorials out there on the web. Take your time, learn how to do it, get comfortable with it. Just start out with very simple formulas. And that is why I keep on continually putting it in these seminars because I do notice that some of you do struggle. And it's not that I'm trying to make you um, have a bad day or a bad assignment. It's just that I'm trying to get you comfortable before you actually get a job where you may be using Excel. It's really to your benefit to learn how to do it. There's a You could maybe even go to your local um, community college for uh, – or actually, probably, I don't know. Maybe there's some tutorials out, out there for NC um, – in, in, in AU, so I'll, I'll even try to look on that and remember to get back with everybody on that one because I'm, I'm not sure, but um, it'll be worth your while. So anyway, if you notice, um, my very first red circle is um, circled around the letters FX. FX means formula bar. And if you notice, there's a there's a equal sign in there, but I did not put my equal sign in there. I actually put it in my uh, cell down below, and then when I clicked on that FX, it just came up like that. Okay. So if you now if you go over to the second red circle, and you see it that it's on a drop. This is what this this box will appear in Excel when I click on that FX bar. All right. And there are uh, several different types of categories of um, formulas that I can use, categories of formulas that I can use. So I have circled financial. There's, you can get statistics. You can get um, all kinds of just um, mathematics, algebra, all kinds of different formulas. But we want finance. So I selected finance. And then my third red circle is circled under NPV. Okay, so when I click on the NPV, it's going to give me a pop-up box and it's going to, I'm going to insert the information. So here's your information that you're going to insert. So let's talk about this. This is your very first problem. You're only going to have two this week um, because you're probably going to have to go into Excel and you're probably going to have to set this up yourself in order to get, get the information in there. So when that box pops up, and it's going to ask you for the rate. And if you notice up here where it says firm's cost of capital is 8%, that's the rate that you're going to put in is 8%. Then you're going to add up Project A. You do this in Excel. You're just going to grab that very first to 50000 and drag it all the way down. And it's going to calculate that uh, amount for you. And then where it says MPV, that is where you're going to put the total at. Well, actually, you need to start by putting your equal sign in, uh, in that blank MPV and then insert the um, 8% and then add up your totals for both projects and then tell me out of the two well so okay so I want you to set this up in Excel and I want you to send send me the the totals for project A and project B and then tell me which one you would pick 
If you had to pick one, which one would you pick? Okay, if you need help with that or you don't understand, um, call me 314-941-2348. Remember, I'm on Central Time. I do work uh, another job during the day. Um, and um, I do have office hours Wednesday from 7 to 9. That, um, I'm definitely going to be available. Um, so don't hesitate. Or you can email me, whatever it is that you feel like you need to do, but do not not do the work because, um, well, first of all, it goes against your grade, and, and it just is just good to get in there and get used to it. So. Okay, another tool is internal rate of return. Internal rate of return, or IRR, most people never use all the, the words, they just call it IRR, is the interest rate at which the net present value of all the cash flows, both positive and negative, from a project or investment equal zero. So the decision criteria, if the, if the IRR is greater than the cost of capital, accept the project. If the IRR is less than the cost of capital, reject the project. So here we go. Same, same setup here. I circled everything for you so you know what you're looking for. This time, all you're looking for is IRR. And here's the same, the same thing that you did in, in assessment problem one, except now you're looking for the IRR. And you just follow the steps. And if you have a difficult time, again, please feel free to contact me. These are two very simple problems in Excel. Um, but if you don't know Excel, I understand that they're not simple. So please get a hold of me if you need. All right. So MPV versus IRR. There is no guarantee that MPV and IRR will rank projects in the same order. However, both methods should reach the same conclusion about the acceptability or non-acceptability of projects. IRR answers the question, what rate of return will I achieve given the following stream of cash flows? And MPV answers the question, what is the following stream of cash flows worth at a particular discount rate in today's dollars? 